What do you do when you feel helpless? When everything is out of your control, what do you do? Here's a personal story. I grew up a Kansas City Royals fan. I can remember being nine years old and sitting in my kid-sized rocking chair watching the 1985 World Series. That year, of course, the Royals won the championship. However, after that, my boys in blue went into a historic and epic slide. Up until 2014, when the Royals played the Oakland A's in what we Kansas Cityans simply refer to as the wild card game, our team had held the record for the longest postseason drought in North American Major League Sports history. 29 years. 29 years of missing the postseason. So while we understood the woes of other sports towns, we didn't really feel sorry for them. For instance, fans of Cleveland sports teams could complain all they wanted that they hadn't seen a championship for almost 50 years, but at least they got to compete for one. Our ball clubs, especially of the 90s and 2000s, were so bad, we didn't even make it down the regular season stretch. By the time the 2014 postseason came around, I had already let baseball go, probably a decade and a half earlier. I wasn't even what you could call a fair weather fan. At best, I was an indifferent fan. I used to say that I went to baseball games just to hang out with my friends and to eat hot dogs and drink some beer. So when the Royals reached the World Series that year, and here I was going to playoff games with my friends and crying as George Brett, my childhood hero, threw out the first pitch, I had some soul-searching to do. Why, all of the sudden, did I love this game again? More importantly, why did I love this team again? What I figured out was that ever since I was a kid, I had been having a transactional relationship with sports in general, and the Royals in particular. The pain of losing so much during all those lean years took its toll on me, and I couldn't handle caring about something only to watch it flop and fail and fall. To my mind, I was paying for tickets and I was paying with my attention by watching games on television and listening on the radio, and I was getting very little in return. I was doing my part, but I had zero control after that. I was helpless. So no matter how many tickets I bought, or how many hot dogs I ate, or how many beers I drank, or how many times I chanted, let's go Royals, I was ultimately helpless. And that feeling of helplessness, frankly, was painful. So I decided my attention and energies and money were better spent on other things. But even if I was super dedicated to my team, that wouldn't have changed anything. Ask any fan of the Chicago Cubs. Until last year, they were known as long-suffering for a reason. No amount of dedication can prevent the pain of helplessly sitting in the stands, watching your team get beat year after year after year. As they say, baseball is designed to break your heart. But there is a lesson to be gained here, and one I've spent the past two to three years learning. Frank DeFord, the great sports writer, once said that sports are just like life in that they allow us to experience joy and pain without the consequence. For sports fans, the wins and losses of sport do not actually have any importance, but they do have real meaning. We get to experience all the emotions of life by watching sports, and through them we get to learn how to, in fact, live life. Frank DeFord is right, sports can teach us how to live life in a low-stakes environment, and the seasoned, wise old baseball fan will tell you that the key to enduring your team's losing streaks is merely recognizing that, as fans, we have absolutely no control over what happens on the diamond. Marcus Aurelius, the great Stoic philosopher, wrote in his book Meditations, Objective judgment, now, at this very moment. Unselfish action, now, at this very moment. Willing acceptance, now at this very moment, of all external events, that's all you need. Marcus Aurelius was not a man who lived in low-stakes environments. He was the emperor of Rome and had lived most of his life commanding its armies. Being helpless was not a part of his game plan, but at the same time, he managed to key in on the truth that much of life was out of his control. He could command his troops, but at a certain point, it was out of his hands. He could rule the empire, but the empire was vast, and he knew that, at a certain point, what happened among the people was out of his hands. He could work with the Senate, but senators were their own people with their own agendas, so, at a certain point, it was all out of his hands. 
As a Stoic, Marcus knew that the key to living a good life was in understanding a very important difference. The difference between what is in our control and what is not. In those four lines from Meditations, he was reminding himself that all he could do was strive to recognize what was actually happening in a given situation and not believe made-up, often fear-driven stories about those events, that he could take action in a way that benefited the whole and not just himself as a part of the whole, and that he could accept whatever came when he had no power over what was going on. So what I learned as I came back to a love of baseball and the Royals was that my transactional relationship with them had been all wrong. I needed to put into practice what Marcus had written. I needed to understand that a baseball game is not actually an epic battle where there are good guys and bad guys. It's really just one man throwing a little ball and the other man trying to hit it. And if the second man does hit it, it's up to the first man's friends to try and stop him before he runs 360 feet in the square. I needed to understand that I could cheer and be excited when my team did well, but that it was selfish of me to get upset with the other team's players just because they happened to be better that day. And I needed to understand that win or lose, it didn't really matter. I still had a great day with my friends and a great family to go home to afterwards. But as Frank DeFord said, sport teaches us about life. If we can figure out how to transfer the lessons that we learn in the low-stakes sporting environment to the high-stakes environment of life, then we're on to something. A friend of mine died last week. And this was a friend who was also one of the biggest baseball fans I've ever met. In fact, one of the last times I saw him was at a game of his Pittsburgh Pirates where he brought to life moments of the game like a Shakespeare professor illuminating the text of Romeo and Juliet. Watching how he died showed me he learned the lessons Marcus Aurelius and baseball want to teach us. Now, he probably wouldn't put it like that, though. He was an ordained pastor, so he necessarily used different words. In moments where he must have been overwhelmed by helplessness as his body shut down, he would say, I belong to God, which is preacher shorthand for a Bible passage that reminds us, in life and in death, we belong to God. Just like all those seasons watching his baseball team struggle, In his own way, he did what Marcus Aurelius advised. He understood the reality of his situation. His cancer was taking him fast. He took whatever action he could in those moments. He conspired with his nurses to make sure his wife had Valentine's Day gifts. And when all options had been exhausted, he accepted death. Because he believed that just as he belonged to God in life, so would he in death. There is a lot to feel helpless about in the world right now. There are so many things you and I have no control over, and I'm positive many of those are very personal for you. Work, a relationship, a project. But I believe the Stoics and baseball and my pastor friend are all correct. Those are just things that are happening. We may not like them, but they are just things that are happening. We don't have to let them take our joy We don't have to let them take our peace. Objective judgment now at this very moment. Unselfish action now at this very moment. Willing acceptance now at this very moment of all external events. That's all you need. That is all we need. Hey everybody, thank you for taking time again to watch this week's essay. I noticed that I got quite a few new subscribers in this last week, so for those of you who shared this around, thank you so much. It's really kind of you. Uh, for you new subscribers, I I hope these videos continue to, uh, to bring a little joy. Uh, bring a little joy, a little understanding to your life. Uh, if this is your first time seeing a, a video essay of mine, click right over there to subscribe. I put out a new video essay roughly uh, every week. Uh, if you if you missed last week's essay, it's right down there, right down there. That's the one on Stephen Colbert. I had a lot of fun, uh, a lot of fun 
making that one. And in honor of my friend Scott, it is my duty to inform you that the 2017 Iditarod race is going to start um, on Saturday, March 4 in downtown Anchorage. Watching the Iditarod was one of Scott's favorite things every year. He and I connected over that every year. It was it was just it was just a lot of fun. So if if you if you're feeling helpless in your life, I hope that this helped you. Uh, if you know someone who is dealing with some helplessness feelings, uh, you, you might share this with them. Um, th these thoughts and these ideas really helped me a few years ago get through some real, uh, some real tragedy. I hope it helped you. Okay, see you next week. Bye-bye.